What's going on here? There's been a rebellion against Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, sir. Well, maybe I can just play a game. I'm sorry, sir. Cannot join. Session is full. The fact that Battlefront Classic Collection was able to launch in the state that it's in rivals Halo the Master Chief Collection in one of the worst gaming launches in history. Less than 12 hours after the launch of the game, the game is currently sitting at a 20% approval rating on Steam. All right, one last try. Bro! Why has the Republic forsaken me? So why are fans upset? And why is this game a genuine disappointment when it comes to the fans and also the Star Wars franchise as a whole? Well, if you want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now, the thing about the Battlefront games is that they're very multiplayer focused. Like, yeah, there is a campaign. There is a galactic warfare mode. Gives you a bit of a tug of war between the Empire and the Rebels or vice versa. But the campaign is really just kind of more simulated multiplayer maps that if you win, you get to push forward until the next level where you basically just run the same thing over again. Or you can play that similar experience, but with players. And that's what Battlefront is mainly known for. Having these gigantic 64 player servers on on games back in 2004 and 2005, which on console back in the day was relatively unheard of. And the multiplayer is the main draw of why people decided to buy into this remastered version of Battlefront. And with reports saying that over 10,000 plus players were trying to play just last night alone, to only have three active servers to maintain less than 200 players, is just a complete lack of support that a game like this needs. Oh, and don't forget to mention that Battlefront 1 has zero servers. It just blows my mind, the lack of anticipation of people wanting to play this game. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating opening night stuff. Even when joining in quick play, letting the game decide what lobby I join into, so session is full, so can't play online. Now maybe Aspire was thinking like, well, we'll just let the community run with it. If they want to create their own games or do their own lands with it. And online service will be kind of like an additional thing. But we're not going to fully support it because of financial reasons. That's understandable, but they didn't message that at all. People were expecting to play Battlefront with up textures and they got the up textures and the price point and the file size we'll talk about later, but the experience just wasn't there. For the people who even were able to play the game online for the multiplayer, which is the main draw of this whole entire franchise, they experienced crashes, frame drops, performance issues, lots of bugs. Definitely not like the simulations. But yeah, let's touch on that file size thing for a second. This game is the same size, these two games, these two games the, from 2004 and 2005 are the same file size as Cyberpunk 2077. How was that even possible? I get, yeah, like uprising textures takes more space on your hard drive. Totally makes sense. But does it blow up the game to a size to a modern high definition RPG game? Doubt it. Also find it funny that the folder is just named Battle. Not even Battlefront. Like they couldn't even complete the name of the folder that holds the game before releasing it. While the up res textures do look a lot better in this game, they're definitely less muddy, more defined. You have actually a little bit better of look of lighting with the baked in lighting with the textures within the game which is really nice, a lot more clarity. So you have a little bit more of a slightly more immersive experience, I guess the way to put it. But does the slight AI upscaling of textures lead to a blooming of the file size? I, I feel like I doubt that. When I say AI upscaled textures, that's literally all they did with this game. There are no quality of life improvements with this either. So the UI, it's still very much the UI of what a 2004-2005 game is, which is maybe great at the time, but nowadays not so much. There is no crossplay within this as well, so if you have friends on PlayStation or Xbox, they can't play with each other. Or if you have friends on PC and your friends are on console, well then those people can't play together either. I guess they wanted to keep that true classic experience. Fans also report missing cutscenes within the campaign, split screen being limited to two players instead of four, Fly controls being inverted with no option to change, sound issues or it spikes then mutes. And for some reason, Battlefront 2's audio is super quiet. Oh my God, Battlefront 2's audio is insanely quiet. Oh no, did I mean to throw that on my team? <gasps> no! Grenade out! Get him! Yeah! Which I find so odd that the audio for the game was just left at an incredibly low volume for really no reason. It's a clear, obvious bug and it was just left in the game. So hopping back and forth between the two experiences is a very jarring experience, literally in volume. Now I hopped in and wanted to play the Battlefront Classic Collection because I missed those games because I was playing too much Halo 2 at the time. But what did the fans have to say when it comes to the re release of this game and well, 
they weren't too kind about it. Probably one of the worst launches of all time. None of us can get a game and there were only three servers lol. Multiplayer completely broken, might as well play the original. In current state, do not buy this re-release junk. Awful servers with high ping. Bugs were discovered that were not even in the original games. And the game doesn't have an anti-cheat, what a joke. Like Aspire literally made the game worse and then sold it for $35. Now you might be saying at this point, well just go ahead and make your own games, right? People can join your servers and things like that. That's very true. But the thing is that when you're the host, your performance completely tanks and you have weird visual glitches. Oh my God, I don't know if this comes through on game, but yeah, the framiness when you're trying to host your own game. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I tried changing up my key binds and settings, but now the game still runs at like 30 frames and I don't have a reticle anymore. So can we like no scope them? Like, eh, eh, and we got a hit. Yeah! Keep in mind, you can buy Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 Classic for less than what the current Classic Collection sells for. And at least those games work. I feel like this is another example of big budget, high production games that get backed by these gigantic publishers, mainly once again, which you have these smaller dev teams making like Pal World and Helldivers, absolutely blowing up and changing the face of game development. Now I will say it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to Battlefront Classic Collection because you can play the single player experience pretty much flawlessly. That's mainly what I did as I jumped in and played that and it was pretty fun, especially the Galactic Conquest is a really cool idea when it comes to the campaign, really adds an extra little bit of layering to the gameplay of it because you're really just, like I said earlier, just playing simulations of multiplayer matches within what would be the campaign. And if you're looking just to shoot bots and just kind of remember how the game was back in the day, you can totally do that. But the thing is then, yeah, like yeah, you do have the up textures, which is nice, but the texture up isn't so crazy where it's like a must play experience, right? You can still do just the same thing in the classic Battlefront games you can play right now for a way lesser price that functions way better. Again, leads back to my point of like, that's why people are so upset with the launch of this remaster is because it's a multiplayer focused game and they kind of made the single player experience because back in 2004 and 2005, you needed that offline experience because internet connections were not as strong as they are now. And people were super excited about playing this up version because a little bit better textures, right? Runs smoother, hopefully, on the new consoles and new hardware. Get a boost in population because it's a new game release and things like that. They kind of relive the old feelings and they just completely dropped the ball on the core experience of what Battlefront Classic has to offer. Now, I did make the comparison to the Halo Master Chief Collection type of launch. I wouldn't put it as that bad, but really close to it because just like in Master Chief Collection, you couldn't play the online servers because it was literally unplayable. Where this one, it is playable, but there just aren't enough servers for people to actually play the game. So effectively, it's the same experience. It really does feel like with the Battlefront Classic Collection that they just hit upscale with AI and then just released it for $35. Honestly, if you want the Battlefront experience, just go play Battlefront 1 and 2 from EA and Respawn. Those games are fantastic and a lot of fun to play. Or just go play the originals, like those games actually work.